Hello there, this is Michael Gio, and today I'm going to talk about this mushroom right here. Name is Chlorophyllum molybdatus. Now, I do have another video of this specimen. That video is completely in Spanish. If you want to know a little bit about Chlorophyllum molybdatus, now in English and with this beautiful accent, here we go. So let's talk about a little bit about this mushroom. This mushroom is um, pretty much everywhere. If it rains two, three days, and temperatures are between you know 70 and 90s, you can find it in the in the grass area. Um, there's um, you can find it in you know in uh, your neighbor's house, um, fields, baseball fields, football fields, because they're everywhere that there's grass, and they can be just one, two specimen up to 40s or maybe 50s forming what we call fairy rings and uh, later I'll talk about a little bit about fairy rings just wanted to take a look at these mushrooms right now This chlorophyll molybdatus is from a group of agarics. Uh, agarics because they would have uh, lamellas, or in this case, gills. So that's why they are the agarics. Um, it's very, very similar to the parasol mushroom. That's why we call this the false parasol. This one is poisonous. You cannot eat this one. You can definitely eat the parasol mushroom. And I want to show you a little bit about how can you differentiate between the actual parasol versus the false uh, parasol. Originally, this mushroom was classified as a lipiota or micro lipiota, but it was moved out from those groups because of the color of the spores. If you do a spore print, which is pretty much what we have here, you put the paleos on top of a paper, and you can see a spore print then you can see that they are uh, in this case green and that is a very important uh, technique in order to identify mushrooms specifically this one because in this case they are green now the actual name of uh, this specimen comes because of that because of the color of uh, uh, the gills chloro in latin um, means you know uh, a green like chlorophyll so it's green and phyllum are kind of like leaves right phyllo um, uh, so it means leaves so it's kind of like saying uh, with the um, green leaves so in this case the green gills so uh, at some point this um, genus only consists of chlorophyllum and chlorophyllum molybdatus only that but specific studies, when you know all the um, uh, molecular taxonomy came into the picture, they found out that um, there's an actually uh, a bunch of different mushrooms from the genus Macrolipiota that are actually similar to Chlorophyll molybdatus and not necessarily other specimens from Macrolipiota. So now we have a lot of uh, different specimens that are actually in the genus Chlorophyll. Um, and that is because of um, the use of uh, molecular techniques in this case for taxonomy or identification specifically genes that are in the uh, ribosomal or ribosomes or ribosomal DNA now um, in 2018 <clears throat> it was published um, that this genus now has, consists of uh, you know like up to like six different divisions of the actual uh, group this is a phylogenetic tree so you can see the six different uh, sections or divisions of this genus right now 
can you differentiate between the false parasols uh, or the actual parasol? This type is one of the characteristics, other than the gills, of course, this type. When you see the actual parasol, you would see that snake-like structure on the stipe, in this case, is very, very smooth. It never completely brown, although in this one you can see that it's kind of like pale brown, but it's because it's, it's the, the specimen is dying. Or when it's very mature, then you would see completely brown, but it's never completely, completely brown. And of course, it would, see, it would be smooth. You would see it's hollow if you... Um, if you if you open it, it's completely hollow inside, stiff, but um, hollow. Is it poisonous? Can you eat it? Is it edible? Well, the truth is, it's not. It's poisonous. Uh, it would maybe do not uh, kill you, but it can cause you vomiting, diarrhea, blood in your stool, or diarrhea with blood. Um, it probably would induce vomiting, uh, fever in some uh, cases, and only three hours after you eat it. Um, also depend on how much do you eat of this specific mushroom. Um, like I said, not necessarily you, you know, necessarily die like other mushrooms that are pretty much poison when you eat it in 24 hours, you can actually die. But um, in this case, um, it, is, it is considered poisonous, so it's not recommended to eat it. Now, is it very attractive to eat it? Like you can see, and again, it looks like a regular mushroom that you might eat because it's fleshy. The thing is, if you smell it, it doesn't smell good at all. For me, it, you know, it, it make me, um, you know, uh, it caused me nausea, like just to smell it. It is not a good smell, and um, I never cooked it before or heated. But I'm pretty sure when you heat it, you can that smell. It's go. It could be very strong. Again, um, it is not as good as, for example, if you when you're cooking shiitake, you can smell. It is a mushroom, sure, but you can smell um, that is a, that that is a specific smell. Uh, uh, that sh in, in this case, shiitake or oyster mushrooms or even king mushrooms. Um, or um, morels, uh, for example, but um, and this one is a very, very strong, strong smell, and again, it's not very attractive for uh, consumption. In some places in Europe, there's been people that reported that have eaten this after they boiled it two or three times. So again, you put it, boil it, <coughs> throw away the water, rinse it, put more water, boil it. Now. At that point, when you have to boil something that you know many times, I don't think there would be um, a good fleshy mushroom with flavors to eat. It would be just like probably cardboard, like wet cardboard. So again, in my case, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't even try to boil it because there's no really any anything good that would come out of that. There is a component that is called molybdophilicine or phalicine. This molybdophilicine component is very similar to peptidases, specifically uh, metalloendopeptidases. In this case, um, these metalloendopeptidases uh, have been found in other edible mushrooms too. So, and you know, and, and, and they don't cause anything. So, um, they, they, they were looking for different specific components but uh, again, what caught my attention is that um, that they try these specific components in rat, and when they try it in rat, they have very similar results of like similar symptoms of if those rat would have eaten the mushrooms or in this case human human beings. I hope you like uh, this video. Again, make sure that you know how to identify it. it doesn't if you you can touch it, you can take a lot of pictures. You can leave it in your grass. It would not affect your grass at all. It would not kill your grass. A lot of people don't like have mushrooms in their grass and they use a bunch of different components to kill the grass. In my case, I would love to see a bunch of these mushrooms in my grass and unfortunately for some reason that I don't know I haven't had any specimen in six years in my grass. 
I cannot believe that. So I'm bringing specimen from other places to do spur print in my garage just to see if someday I can have whoops, chlorophyllum molybdatus. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to know a little bit more about mushrooms. And again, thank you very much. See you later.